All right, guys, listen up. Are you ready for an adventure? I'm talking about a place with raw beauty, vibrant culture, and experiences that'll stay with you forever. Yeah, I'm talking about Indonesia. We're going deep, beyond the typical tourist traps. We're diving into the heart of Indonesia, uncovering hidden gems and sharing local secrets that most travelers never get to see. I'm talking about the kind of adventure that changes you, the kind of trip you'll be bragging about for years. This isn't just about ticking off destinations on a bucket list. This is about immersing yourself in a world so different, so vibrant, so alive, that you can't help but be changed by it. We're talking ancient temples, smoking volcanoes, pristine beaches, and wildlife encounters that'll blow your mind. So pack your bags, grab your camera, and get ready to experience Indonesia like never before. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. This is going to be epic. First up, we're diving headfirst into Raja Ampat, an archipelago so mind-blowingly beautiful, it's practically unreal. Imagine this, crystal clear turquoise water, teeming with more marine life than you ever thought possible. We're talking over 1,500 species of fish, 700 types of coral, and manta rays the size of small cars. Now I'm not exaggerating about the size of these manta rays. These gentle giants are absolutely breathtaking. And they're not shy either. They glide right past you, effortlessly soaring through the water. It's an experience that'll stay with you long after you've dried off. But it's not just about the big guys. Raja Ampat is a macro photographer's dream. Every inch of the reef is bursting with tiny, colorful creatures. You've got your pygmy seahorses, nudibranchs that look like they're from another planet, and mantis shrimp that can punch with the force of a bullet train. This place is a diver's paradise, no doubt. But even if you're not a certified diver, don't worry. The snorkeling here is just as incredible. Grab a mask, some fins, and prepare to be amazed. Listen up, I'm about to drop some knowledge bombs. If you're planning a trip to Raja Ampat, there are a few things you need to know. First off, this place is remote. Like, really remote. But trust me, that's part of its charm. The best way to experience Raja Ampat is by liveaboard. You'll hop from island to island, diving and snorkeling in different spots every day. Just make sure you book your trip well in advance. The best time to visit is during the dry season from October to April. The seas are calmer, and the visibility is crystal clear. One last thing. Respect the reef. This ecosystem is incredibly fragile, so be mindful and don't litter. All right, guys, from the underwater paradise of Raja Ampat, we're heading inland to explore Borobudur Temple. This massive Buddhist temple dates back to the 9th century. Built with over 2 million cubic feet of volcanic stone, it's intricately carved with Buddhist stories. It's a masterpiece of ancient architecture. Walking through Borobudur, you follow the footsteps of ancient pilgrims. You can feel the weight of history and the echoes of prayers. It's a humbling experience, showcasing faith and human creativity. Now, let's talk about the best time to experience this ancient wonder. Trust me, timing is everything at Borobudur. If you want to witness something truly magical, I'm talking about a site that'll stay with you forever. You gotta catch the sunrise. Imagine this. The first rays of dawn breaking over the horizon, bathing the temple in a golden glow. The mist rising from the surrounding valleys, creating an ethereal atmosphere. It's like stepping back in time, witnessing something sacred and timeless. To make the most of your visit, hire a local guide. They'll not only navigate the crowds for you, but also provide valuable insights into the history, symbolism, and stories behind the intricate carvings. Trust me. These guys are walking encyclopedias of Borobudur knowledge. And one last tip, dress respectfully. Remember, this is an active place of worship for many. So, cover your shoulders and knees and be mindful of your behavior. Show respect for the site and the people who consider it sacred. All right, guys, buckle up because we're diving into Komodo National Park. 
This place is like stepping into Jurassic Park. But instead of Jeff Goldblum, you've got me, your trusty guide. It's wild, rugged, and home to the legendary Komodo dragon. Yeah, you heard that right, dragons. They're not spitting fire, but these ancient beasts are a sight to behold. We're talking about 10-foot-long lizards with prehistoric roots, roaming around like they own the place. And honestly, they kind of do. The park itself is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and for good reason. Imagine this, turquoise waters, volcanic landscapes, lush forests. It's like Mother Nature threw a dart at a map and said, right here, I'm going all out. So, if you're an adrenaline junkie with a thirst for adventure and a healthy respect for giant reptiles, Komodo National Park needs to be on your bucket list. Trust me, it's an experience you won't forget. Now, before you book your flight and start packing your bags, we need to talk about safety. Look, I'm all for spontaneity, but when it comes to Komodo dragons, you gotta respect the game. These aren't cuddly lizards, they're powerful predators. Rule number one, you never ever approach a Komodo dragon without an experienced guide. These guys know the dragon's behavior, they know the terrain, and they're equipped to handle any situation. It's like having a backstage pass with extra security clearance. Number two, always stay alert and aware of your surroundings. Don't wander off the designated trails and always listen to your guide's instructions. It's all about minimizing risks and maximizing awesome experiences. And finally, be prepared for some serious heat. This is a tropical island, remember? Pack light, breathable clothing, a hat, and plenty of water. Trust me, dehydration is not your friend especially when you're trekking through dragon territory. Get ready to set your alarms early, folks, because we're about to witness a sunrise like no other. We're talking about Mount Bromo, an active volcano in East Java, and a sight that will blow your mind. Picture this. You're bundled up in a jacket. The air is crisp and cool, and the sky is just starting to lighten. You hike up to a viewpoint, and as the first rays of sun peek over the horizon, they illuminate a landscape straight out of a fantasy novel. You've got Mount Bromo, this majestic cone puffing out smoke, rising from a vast sea of sand called the Sea of Sand. And around it, these otherworldly peaks, all bathed in this golden light. It's surreal, it's breathtaking, it's an Instagrammer's dream come true. But Mount Bromo is more than just a pretty picture. It's a spiritual place, a reminder of the raw power and beauty of nature. Trust me, witnessing this sunrise is an experience that will stay with you long after you've left. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hiking up a volcano at the crack of dawn sounds a little intense. But trust me, it's totally doable, even if you're not a seasoned climber. There are jeeps that can take you up most of the way, but honestly, the hike is half the fun. You'll trek through this otherworldly landscape, this volcanic ash and sand stretching as far as the eye can see. You might even see the local Tengarese people, who consider Bromo sacred, making offerings to the volcano. It's a powerful reminder that travel is about more than just pretty sights. It's about connecting with different cultures and ways of life. Once you reach the top, the view is just indescribable. It's like standing on top of the world. You can see for miles in every direction, and the sunrise just paints everything in these incredible colors. It's worth every step, trust me. Just remember to dress warmly, it gets chilly up there. And bring a headlamp for the early morning hike, and of course, your camera. You won't want to miss capturing this moment. All right, guys, get ready to experience something truly unique because we're heading to Tana Taraja in South Sulawesi. Now, this isn't your typical tourist destination. This is a place where ancient traditions are still very much alive, particularly when it comes to their relationship with life and death. The Torijan people are known for their elaborate funeral ceremonies and unique burial rituals. We're talking massive celebrations that can last for days with feasts, music, dancing, and even water buffalo sacrifices. It's intense, it's fascinating, and it's a powerful reminder of the diversity of human culture. 
but it's not all about death here. Tana Toraja is also home to stunning landscapes, with lush green rice terraces carved into the mountainsides and traditional villages with these incredible boat-shaped houses called Tongkonan. It's like stepping back in time. So, if you're looking for an off-the-beaten-path adventure, a chance to immerse yourself in a completely different culture, Tana Toraja is calling your name. Just remember to be respectful, keep an open mind, and get ready for an unforgettable experience. Now, I know what you're thinking. Attending a funeral might not be your idea of a good time. And I get it. But the Torijin people believe that death is not the end, but a transition to the afterlife. Their ceremonies are a celebration of life, a way to honor their loved ones and guide them on their journey. It's important to approach these ceremonies with the utmost respect. Dress modestly, ask for permission before taking photos, and be mindful of your behavior. Remember, you're a guest in their home, and it's important to be sensitive to their customs and beliefs. But don't be afraid to engage with the locals, ask questions, and learn about their culture. The Torijan people are incredibly welcoming and proud to share their traditions with visitors. Just be respectful, be curious, and be prepared to have your mind blown. And hey, while you're there, make sure to explore the incredible scenery. Hike through the rice terraces, visit the traditional villages, and take in the breathtaking views. Tana Taraja is a feast for the senses and an experience you won't soon forget. All right, guys, picture this. You're standing on the edge of a crater, but it's not just any crater. This one's filled with water, crystal clear water as far as the eye can see. That's Lake Toba, the largest volcanic lake on this planet. And trust me, it's even more epic in person. We're talking about a lake so big it has an island in the middle, Samosir Island, which is actually where we are headed next. I'm talking traditional villages, ancient rituals, and scenery that'll make your jaw drop. I'm not gonna lie, the journey here was no joke, hours on bumpy roads, but let me tell you, this view, this place, it makes every second worth it. So, grab your swim trunks, pack your sense of adventure, and get ready to dive into the beauty of Lake Toba. You won't regret it. Okay, we made it to Samosir Island, and this place is like stepping back in time. Traditional Batak houses with their distinctive curved roofs, ancient burial sites scattered across the island. It's like something out of a history book, but like a really, really cool history book. We're about to jump on a boat tour around the lake, gonna check out the local villages, maybe even catch a traditional Batak dance performance. I've heard these things are incredible, full of energy, music, and stories passed down for generations. Now, if you're planning a trip here, a little tip from yours truly, rent a scooter. The roads are pretty decent, and it's the best way to explore the island at your own pace. You can zip around, discover hidden waterfalls, and soak in all the natural beauty this place has to offer. Trust me, Lake Toba is more than just a lake. It's an experience, a journey into the heart of Indonesian culture. All right, guys, we're about to embark on a journey to a place unlike any other, a place where time seems to stand still. We're talking about the Baliam Valley in the highlands of West Papua, home to the Dani people, one of the most remote and fascinating tribes on earth. Forget your fancy hotels and Wi-Fi signals, this is about as off the grid as it gets. We're talking traditional huts, ancient customs, and a way of life that's remained relatively unchanged for centuries. Now, getting here is not for the faint of heart. It's a bumpy flight to Wamina, the gateway to the valley, and then we're talking trekking through dense jungles, crossing rickety bridges, the real deal. But trust me, the moment you set foot in this valley, surrounded by towering mountains and the warmth of the Dani people, you'll know you've discovered something truly special. So we're hanging out with the Dani people and let me tell you, these guys are the real deal. They're known for their traditional attire, the men wearing elaborate feather headdresses and the women adorned with beautiful beads and shells. 
We're talking pig feasts, ancient rituals, and a sense of community that's hard to find in our modern world. It's humbling, inspiring, and a little bit mind-blowing all at the same time. Now, if you're planning a trip to the Balliam Valley, remember to be respectful, learn a few basic phrases in the local language, and be prepared to embrace a way of life that's vastly different from our own. This is about more than just ticking off a bucket list destination. It's about connecting with a culture that's on the brink of disappearing, about understanding our shared humanity, and maybe, just maybe, learning a thing or two about ourselves along the way. All right, guys, forget everything you think you know about Paradise because Nusa Penida is about to redefine the game. We're talking crystal clear turquoise waters, dramatic cliffs plunging into the ocean, and beaches so pristine you'll think you've stepped into a postcard. Located just off the coast of Bali, Nusa Penida is like Bali's cooler, less crowded little sister. And trust me, she's got it going on. We're talking world-class diving, epic hikes, and a laid-back vibe that'll make you want to throw away your watch and just soak it all in. Now, getting here involves a bit of a bumpy boat ride, but let me tell you, the moment you lay eyes on those turquoise waters, you'll know it's worth every single second. So, pack your swimsuit, grab your sunscreen, and get ready to experience the magic of Nusa Penida, because this place is the real deal. Okay guys, we're at Kelling King Beach, also known as T-Rex Bay, and let me tell you, this place is straight out of Jurassic Park. I'm talking about a massive cliff that looks like a giant T-Rex head jutting out into the ocean, with the most insane turquoise waters you've ever seen crashing against the shore below. It's a bit of a trek down to the beach, but trust me, the views are worth every step. And hey, if you're feeling adventurous, you can even rent a kayak and paddle around the base of the cliff. Talk about an epic Instagram shot. But Kelling King Beach is just the beginning. Nusa Penida is full of hidden coves, secluded beaches, and natural wonders like Broken Beach, a giant sinkhole filled with turquoise water and surrounded by towering cliffs. So, rent a scooter, explore the island at your own pace, and discover the magic of Nusa Penida. Just be careful on those cliffs, folks. Safety first. All right, guys, we're in Ubud, the artistic heart of Bali. This place just oozes creativity. Intricate carvings, vibrant paintings, and traditional dances that'll blow your mind. The artistic energy here is contagious. Maybe it's the fresh air, the lush rice paddies, or the incense wafting through the streets. Ubud has this magical vibe that makes you want to create and explore. So grab a map, or just get lost, and wander through the winding streets. You'll find hidden cafes, workshops, and galleries showcasing incredible local artists. In Ubud, the journey is just as important as the destination. Now, let's talk about the Ubud Art Market. This place is a sensory overload in the best way possible. Imagine a labyrinth of stalls overflowing with handmade goods, from intricate silver jewelry to vibrant batik fabrics to those iconic Balinese dream catchers. The energy here is electric. You've got locals bartering with tourists, the air thick with the smell of spices and incense, and the sounds of traditional gamelan music filling the air. It's chaotic, it's colorful, and it's an absolute must-do when you're in Ubud. But here's the thing. Don't be afraid to haggle. It's part of the experience, and the vendors expect it. Just be respectful, have a price in mind, and don't be afraid to walk away if it's not feeling right. Chances are, they'll call you back with a better offer. And hey, even if you don't buy anything, just wandering through the market is an adventure in itself. You'll witness firsthand the incredible craftsmanship of the Balinese people and get a taste of the real Ubu. It's a cultural experience you won't find in any guidebook. Okay guys, picture this, crystal clear turquoise waters, powdery white sand beaches, and swaying palm trees as far as the eye can see. No, this isn't a dream. This is the Gili Islands. 
located just off the coast of Lombok, the three Gilis, Trawangan, Mino, and Air, are like something out of a postcard. We're talking zero cars, zero worries, just pure island vibes. Now, each island has its own unique personality. Gili T, the largest of the three, is the party island, with beach bars pumping out tunes late into the night. Gili Meno is the smallest and most laid back, perfect for couples looking for a romantic escape. And Gili Air sits somewhere in between, a little bit of party, a little bit of peace, a perfect blend. But honestly, you can't go wrong with any of them. Whether you're diving with turtles, snorkeling over vibrant coral reefs, or just kicking back on the beach with a fresh coconut, the Gili Islands are all about embracing the slow life. Now, as much as we love exploring these incredible destinations, it's important to remember that we have a responsibility to protect them too. And the Gili Islands, with their pristine beauty, are especially vulnerable. So, what does that mean for us as travelers? It means being mindful of our impact. Choose eco-friendly accommodations that prioritize sustainability. Say no to single-use plastics. Bring your own reusable water bottle and shopping bag and support local businesses that are committed to protecting the environment. Remember guys, every little bit helps. Even small actions can make a big difference. By traveling responsibly, we can ensure that these paradise islands remain that way for generations to come. And hey, it's not just about the environment, it's about respecting the local communities too. Learn a few basic Indonesian phrases, be mindful of local customs, and embrace the opportunity to connect with people from different cultures. Remember, Travel is a privilege. Let's make sure we're using that privilege to make a positive impact, not a negative one. And that's a wrap on our Indonesian adventure. We've trekked through jungles, dived into turquoise waters, witnessed ancient rituals, and experienced the warmth of the Indonesian people. From the misty peaks of Mount Bromo to the vibrant coral reefs of Raja Ampat, Indonesia has blown us away with its sheer diversity and beauty. And honestly, guys, we've only just scratched the surface. There are so many more hidden gems waiting to be explored. So, what are you waiting for? Pack your bags, grab your passport, and get ready for the adventure of a lifetime. Indonesia is calling, and trust me, you don't want to miss this. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button for more travel adventures, and let us know in the comments below which destination you're most excited to explore. Until next time, keep exploring.